Hey Matthews and wide receiver Cooper Cup. What's going on, guys? What's up? I can't hear the crowd though. Yeah. Uh, so practice today ended with the Rams' leader in rushing on the field. Uh, I believe he can still play. I would. I don't know. Think you could put on some pads? You think? Play Coop? I think so. I had. I was fortunate enough to play against Steven Jackson, so I got to uh, relive some memories with him right there. But um, he was a tremendous running back. Obviously played on some uh, teams that weren't as successful as the Rams are currently, but um, he was kind of the heart and soul of that of those teams at the time and had an amazing career. Yeah, yeah he's looking a little smooth out there. He's a move. Yeah, he had a, he had a little nice little smooth. cut yeah. there. Yeah, right when he <laughs> got out there. Yeah. There were no pads today. Well, pads for you, no pads for you, but it's a good day of rest and maybe observations. What kind of things did you take in while you were watching your guys out there? Yeah, it was a, well, it was a nice day off for the veterans who were sure. uh, long in the, the tooth to um, take some time off and enjoy, but just kind of watch the young guys grind out there, um, make some plays, and, and just watch this team build and compete and move forward along in this training camp. What makes training camp special for you, Clay, as you continue to come back to this? I think it's the opportunity to compete, um, you know, to come out here and prove yourself. And for me, especially coming to a new team with, uh, you know, everything's new, really coaching staff, players, um, opposition. So to come out here and compete, show my merit, show my worth, show, uh, you know, why they brought me here is, um, you know, is special and what makes training camp for us. Coop, it's great to see you back out on the field. I know everyone's really excited to see Coop back on the field this season. Yeah. But I, I gotta give it, I gotta give it to Josh Reynolds because he has some real pretty catches out there today. Um, Robert Woods called the wideout group a four-headed monster. How would you describe the four guys? <laughs> I think that's a great term for it, but I mean, it goes deeper than that, too. I mean, I think our, our room in general, we just got a lot of uh, real good uh, football players, real smart guys, and uh, guys that love to compete. Um, but I mean, you know, we're talking a little bit before coming up here about the Fuego moment of the day. <laughs> you know, I think, you know, Josh had a double move today. That was great. Incredible uh, catch, and th uh, catch and throw by Jared. Um, but yeah, you know, I think forehead monster is a, I mean, I'll, I'll roll right. with that. We're going to roll with that. Maybe some mm -hmm. t-shirts are made or something Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. We can get Jared to make some for his JG, <laughs> whatever, 16 <laughs> line, right? JG 16. Yeah, but how, how are you feeling, Cooper, as you come back from the, the injury last year? Uh, I feel good. You know, body feels great. Uh, so, so, uh, so much, I mean, when you, when you haven't played football in eight and a half, nine months, uh, you realize just the nuances of the game that, you know, I think you, over time, just kind of forget about, but I quickly reintroduced to and you know it's just about you know getting back into that rhythm um, seeing those things again and uh, being able to react and process um, you know what you're seeing and be able to make those decisions I mean I think Clay can speak to it as well I mean so much of football is, isn't isn't even I mean you have to have the ability but you got to be able to process make decisions and um, the right decisions in real um, changing environments um, and so I think that's just a big thing right now getting used to that and it's going to come with some more reps. I think you can both appreciate the secret sauce that's behind Reggie Scott, our team doctors, and the strength and conditioning group. I saw you running with our strength and conditioning coach today. Uh, overall thoughts on you know coming from a different team and now joining you know the, the the guys that are kind of the unsung heroes of the team. Sure. Yeah. I mean, um, they've done a fantastic job. I think one of the things I noticed about this team more so net than well, obviously Green Bay was the fact that um, you know there's a lot of um, older veterans and yeah. but guys who have proven to them you know proven to uh, the players on the team and the coaching yeah. staff that they can take it upon themselves to perform at a professional level. So they kind of give us you know days like today to rest, so that way we can come back tomorrow and you know we still get our conditioning in. We're not just sitting on the sideline the whole time. So uh, they do a fantastic job, and although you know it's really in its infancy for me, um, you can truly see why you know this team has had the success in which they've had. Um, you know, not only with the wins and losses, but as far as their health. Yeah. Trust. I would say they trust you guys, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that's the one thing. Yeah. Being accountable. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think especially, you know, for you, Cooper, coming back from everything, your, your rehab seems to have gone very quickly. What, what has been a successful, I guess, thing behind that? It's like voodoo you know, magic. Really, <laughs> no, I, I mean, more than anything, I think those guys, um, our strength staff, our training staff, um, they deserve so much credit for what happens. Not, I mean, for myself, surely. I mean, I, I owe those guys an incredible debt of gratitude. Um, but just as how they take care of everyone on the team um, is really, truly incredible. Um, and uh, the time they put in, not just, I mean, there's obviously the rehab side of things, but the meetings, the things they do to make sure that they're not complacent with anything, any of the processes they're take, they're doing and implementing. They want to make sure they're on top of things as well. And um, just as coach demands the best of us when we step out on the field, 
um, they take it upon themselves to be the best for us off the field as well. And you can't really say enough about this defense that's drastically improved. Now we've got great veteran presence with Clay Matthews and Eric Weddle. Marcus Peters, by the way, told me yesterday on this desk that you are the toughest person to cover. <laughs> what do you see out of Marcus Peters? <laughs> Uh, wow. Well, you know, that, I th <laughs> thank you, Marcus. Of personality. I that. No, but I mean, he brings an energy to this team. Uh, that's, that's incredible. Obviously, you talk about the veterans that we have on mm -hmm. um, that side of the ball um, and what they're able to do as a whole defense. But you have someone like Marcus who um, is a very instinctual player um, and, like I said, brings so much energy to that side of the ball. Um, it's so much fun to compete against him, to be able to you know, pick his brain. And um, I think that's one of the coolest things is just being able to talk to these guys and you know, say, you know, what what can I do better here? You know, why did this work? Why did this not work? And, um, you know, we both, we all just want each other to be the best we can possibly, possibly be. So when, you know, that opponent isn't a teammate, you know, that you're able to be successful. You know, Clay, coming into a new team, to a new squad, and obviously you're, you're such a veteran, how have you seen this team start to gel on that defensive side? Well, I think, you know, they have so many pieces in place already, which is why they've had, you know, as much success as, the, as they've had. But, you know, to add the guys like you had mentioned, Eric and uh, myself, obviously re-signing Dante and uh, bringing in some of these, uh, you know, free agents and rookies throughout the draft. Um, you know, it's just helped solidify any of those perceived weaknesses or weaknesses that, you know, the coach and staff saw. So, um, but for us, I think you look at the professionalism of all those guys and you put them together. Um, you know, I haven't seen a group of, of guys like that, especially veterans, um, you know, who have that kind of level of experience and talent and accolades come together. So hopefully the result is um, even better than what they were able to do last year. Mm -hmm. For both of you, I'm just curious because now, Clay, you're, you when what, what year are you now? 11. 11. <laughs> 11. I'm like, 11. Coop, you just came back from an injury. You're both healthy. You're both looking good. What is it that you love about this game that keeps bringing you back to this field? Is it the smell? Is it the sweat? Is it the hair? Cooper was telling me it was about the money, but I'm all right. Yeah, he was saying the money keeps me coming back. He was Clay telling me. Right. Yeah. Um, shoot, I don't have anything that's. I mean, I don't think there's. The film room. That's just like you know, I mean. For this guy. For, for me, I just felt like I just feel like you know, from an early age, I was just felt like this is where I belong. You know, this is um, this is what God made me to do, and when I step on the field, um, that's when I can just feel his pleasure that's when I get some of the most joy out of my life and um, you know I have to feel like it's just where I'm supposed to be so um, I, I don't know I, it's all of it it's, it's the fans it's, it's, certainly it's, nice it's got fans for the here. game yeah. I mean certainly and, and Clay I obviously don't necessarily haven't known you as long as we've known Cooper but you know you guys seem to be very very passionate about this game just that in general you have to be. You have to be uh, at this point. This is something that requires. It's. Um, I know the fans only get to see you know six months of football, but the reality is it's a year-round job. From the way you eat, sleep, drink, uh, you know, working out, the off-season workouts, programs, uh, and one thing that we always talk about that unfortunately, well, maybe for the best, that not a lot of people get to see is the locker room environment, yeah. and that's where really you know the camaraderie is built. And then you go out, you play for one another, and you have that sense of. Um, you know, brotherhood and camaraderie, as I just said. Speaking of the fans, who don't get to see all of you for you know for six months out of you, they get to see you. I took a couple Twitter questions. Clay, this one's for you from Caesar. <coughs> Wade Phillips, are the myths true about the defense, God? <laughs> well, I don't know what myths those are, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's been fantastic. You know, he puts us in the best position possible to make plays. He allows us to play to the best of our abilities. And you've got guys in the secondary on the D-line and the linebackers, second level, who can just, you know, play to their abilities and make plays as opposed to just being kind of stuck in, um, you know, one little thing that they do. So that's, that's what I think has allowed him to have so much success is, you know, using his players to the best of their abilities. Yeah. And Coop, for you... How much JG16 gear did Jared Goff hook you up with? Oh, so I've got a bone to pick on this one. Oh, oh yes, let's go. I, I have received zero. Wow, <laughs> Jared, what so, is happening? But I will say, I think it would just drop today. Oh, And so okay. maybe it might have been an, like an exclusive thing. Like, you know, maybe. Obviously, yeah, it's it. definitely the exclusive. I'm, is, I'm sure that's what it was. It's going to be in your locker as soon as we wrap up yeah. training camp. I'm absolutely <laughs> sure. And then we always end this uh, Rams Desk Live with a Fuego moment. My Fuego moment of the day. Today was Legends Day, guys, here at Trent.
Rams training camp. We had a bunch of the legends. Yeah, it was so great. We had Steven Jackson here. We had uh, Jim Everett. We had Tory Holt. So many legends, and it was great to see those guys kind of get together and talk about the old days. So that was my Fuego moment of the day. Miles, what do you got? Um, so Cooper talked about one of them that we saw in practice with uh, Josh Reynolds on the double move. I'm so reserved on that one. So. He's yes, taking so it. Don't take yes, I know. I know. So th I have another one. Not okay. There was one play where Dante Fowler <laughs> was rushing from the defense's right, and he just leapt up and he made an interception, basically right on the line of scrimmage. That was a pretty incredible play. I will give that as my fuego moment. Fuego moment. What do you got? You're gi you're giving it to I'm Josh. I'm keeping with Josh. Yeah. Double Josh, move, Josh touchdown. Reynolds. That was great. great. Throw, great catch. Over. Clay, what do you got? Fuego moment of the day. Probably wearing a sweatshirt in this heat. <laughs> <laughs> Conditioning before practice and that. Broke a good little sweat, but uh, that's my in fuego moment. Fuego <laughs> moment of the day. Yeah. Thank you, Clay Coop. It's great to see you guys. Yeah, Thanks for the crowd for coming out. <laughs> coming out, the Rams signed a big name to a one-day contract. We find out when, right here. Hey, how you doing? How you guys doing? Back to man, thanks it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you, man. Come on, tackle me. How you doing, my man? Love the hair. Love the Hulk. I love the Hulk. <laughs> One, two, three. Go Rams! How important was it to you to set the standard throughout your career? Yeah, it was really important to me personally. You know, it's one of those things that I really took great pride in the vocal leaders, they did their thing, and for me, I was more a show up and prove guy, and I wanted to know that if I'm gonna go out there and put my neck on the line, I expect my teammates to do the same. How does it feel to sign a one-day contract and retire as a ramp? Feels good, you know, it's something that I didn't plan, I didn't think would happen. I kind of moved on with life, and you know, to have the organization ask me to come back and for us to finish it the right way, put a nice bow on top of it. Um, I was humbled by it. Miles, that was a great interview with Steven Jackson. Now, I know we come to camp every year, but there are some essentials that people need to bring with them to camp. What is your essential thing? Okay, I got one, right? It's a Bluetooth speaker. I gotta have my Bluetooth speaker because I gotta have my music when I'm getting ready in the morning. Yes, when okay. I'm crimping and doing all those things. That <laughs> to look pretty, for yes. miles to look pretty. You know what, I'm not gonna give away my secrets to looking pretty. However, we are giving some secrets away. What's in your bag? All right, you ready for this? We're here for uh, 12 days, got about 12 shirts. Couple pairs of shorts, brought a gun. This is classic Brian right here, right? Nice okay. little slides. Did you just call them sombreros? S them sombreros. Ain't that a hat? <laughs> no. Oh, no. Let's stay right know. here. Them what is this called? Sombrero. A sombrero is a hat. Am I wrong? I think you're wrong. <laughs> These are my chakras. Is that Bob Martin? You're like surprised. Oh, it's not Bob Martin, it's Bob Ross. Bob Ross? Oh, it's Bob Ross. The painter. He's a legend, bro. I need to tag him. Yeah, he dead. Oh, there he is, sombrero. Bro? It's on the hat. Or it's on the, oh. Go check him out. All right, go ahead, next. These are my jack bags. <laughs> Kind of cool to see a glimpse of what guys put inside their bag before camp. We also got a glimpse of what guys are seeing on the field. We put a GoPro on Micah Kaiser's helmet. Check out what that looks like here. I don't watch that stupid show. I don't like a show that I don't get to know my characters. on the back, but let's come downhill attack mode. Shot block and escape. On your mic up. Good. 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 Got you. Come on, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs>
you working on your ball security, dog? <laughs> You see the drip? Stop facing down, man. Alright, here we go. Smart. Strong day three for Rams training camp. Miles, what did you see so far? Well, I thought it was just good to see the guys in pads again. You know, it starts to really feel like football when you see defenses start to really run fit. That's when you can really do it, when you have on shoulder pads. You're popping a little bit. You're not really trying to hit too hard. You want to be safe. You want to be smart. But it starts to really feel like football again. It starts to feel like training camp is on once you get the shoulder pads going. That's what Miles has to say. You can hear what everyone else had to say during our post Post-practice pressers. What are you hoping to see and what are you hoping not to see? You know, really a lot of the same that you saw today. I mean, we won't go to the ground or anything like that, but I think it's, you know, really guys just understanding how to fit blocks, how to play the game and the equipment that we play in. And and typically, you know, the, the times that you're competing with a helmet on and you don't have the shoulder pads and some of the contact that inevitably occurs, that's where you really want to educate guys. It's exciting. You know, when, um, you know, when it was kind of known that things weren't going to work out in Green Bay, I think there's a, a need for me to be here, you know, to join a, you know, a competitor, um, a team that can obviously play in the Super Bowl last year and has the potential to go back again is, is all the more reasons. Do you think that work that they put in last year is starting to pay off? I think so. I, I think really more than anything, a lot of the stuff that, that happened last year are things that we can use as learning things to move forward. That's it for Rams training camp. Serena Morales, Miles Simmons, thanks for joining us on Rams Camp Live. We will see you tomorrow.